Hi, I'm Jim Carefoot with Armada Technologies. This is Craig Reed with Armada Technologies, and today we're just going to take a couple minutes to illustrate the concept of troubleshooting two wire decoder systems using a milliamp plant meter. And of course, today we're going to use the Armada Pro 93, which is kind of an industry standard for this kind of troubleshooting. What we've done is laid out some maxi cable with a couple of Rainbird decoders on them as, as examples. This could just as well be a Hunter ID1 cable with Hunter decoders and uh, other vendors, but we're going to use this for illustration today. The main concept that we use, since we're always troubleshooting the cable out in the field and less the controller, is we have no controller connected. Instead, we're providing a 24 volt power source to provide a nice steady 24 volts AC down the cable. Gives us a much quicker and easier measurement of the currents flowing that are, are should be normal in the cable. So uh, what we're gonna always do, of course, is to turn it to the milliamp here current setting in here, which means that these jaws now will be uh, measuring very small levels of current. So what we do in the beginning, where we connect to the head end of the cable, we've disconnected it from the controller, of course, is we have, um, uh, we're checking the main current, and we always go across one wire, not both wires, because this current is looping out into the field, so we go across one wire to read it. And we're reading about 2.8 milliampers, which is the sum current of these deco two Rainbird decoders that are out here. That is a normal situation. If there were shorts downstream, the current would be much larger, and that would be abnormal. And we know that we have two decoders out here. If this current was much more than 5 milliampers, we'd know we'd have trouble. Um, alterna alternatively, if one of these decoders was damaged or disconnected or had a corroded splice, the current would be lower than normal. So we're using these variations in current to try to detect where the trouble is. So the, what we would do next is move to the, the, we've laid these on the top of the ground, of course, just for illustration. This would normally be a valve box. And we open up the first valve box, or one of the valve boxes in, in sequence, and clamp across the, uh, the, the main current, the, one of the main wires to see the incoming current. We've loosened one wire here to help illustrate a corroded splice. So that's what we're going to, to illustrate. So here again, where, where the current is coming from the main controller end of the cable, we see 2.8 milliampers, which is the normal thing. And um, we would expect that here, and we'll move downstream to see what the current is. If we can illustrate, if this was a bad splice, we pull this splice out, it's broken or corroded, and we check the current again, we've just lost the net current from one decoder. I can only see 1.4 milliampers of current that means there's only one decoder working on the stream here. Um, that means that there's a bad splice. This is one of the ways that you can determine what the fault is. If somewhere downstream there was a short, one of the wires uh, was connected to the wet ground or if there was a lightning strike that, that damaged the decoder, the current would be very high. But as it is here, we're just working ourselves downstream and there we're seeing the normal current for, for the next decoder down the line. So things are looking normal here 1.4 milliampers of current flowing here, and 1.4 going down this way. So we moved down our demonstration cable a little further to the second valve box, if you can imagine that, where the, our other decoder is. Each of these Rainbird decoders under this power circumstance is consuming about 1.4 milliampers. So well, out of the head end of the cable, we had two decoders worth of 1.4 milliampers, so we were reading 2.8 milliampers at the head of the cable. That is our normal circumstance and what we expect. And as we move past one valve box to the next one, the current has dropped by one decoder, so we're back down to 1.4 milliampers. Perfectly normal situation. Uh, we can check the current going into the decoder, current on the cable, very straightforward. And we're not opening any splices. One of the beauties of the use of this clamp meter is that we're not opening any splices to do this troubleshooting. And what we've got here now, there are no further valve boxes downstream, and we're checking, and as it should be, there's a zero current flowing down the cable to the field. So we know that there are no short circuits or problems there. However, something that could happen is that in some downstream valve box or uh, junction box, the cable, and I'm going to simulate that by jamming this maxi cable into the dirt. When I did that, all of a sudden now, we've got four or five milliampers flowing to what should be a dead end cable. I know I've got a short type of a problem down there. So the, we're looking alternately for too little cable, too much uh, too, too little current, and too much current and just the right amount of current. And this is telling us what's happening on the cable without doing any, any intervening into the cable, uh, removing uh, splices or anything. So that's the purpose of the milliamp clamp meter.